very happy to have here with us here on the show, Dr. Marsha Coleman Adebayo, who is the co-founder of the Bethesda African Cemetery Coalition. Many, many other great things, an award-winning author, a whistleblower of great renown. But Marsha, thank you so much for joining us here on the show. Thank you so much for having me again. No, very happy to have you. And just for those maybe, I'm assuming there's probably a lot of people who haven't heard of this, talk to us about this African burial ground and what's happening there in Bethesda. Um, it's an African burial ground that was um, that came into existence, obviously, during slavery, or what Europeans like to call slavery. Uh, we call it, um, basically, it was European barbarism. Um, and it existed on River Road, uh, right outside of Washington, D.C. If you're familiar with Whole Foods, it's right down the street from the Whole Foods Market um, in Bethesda. And for 400, for between uh, mid 1700s and 1865, Africans were kidnapped, brought to Bethesda, uh, tortured, forced to work uh, the tobacco uh, in tobacco fields when they died, when they were murdered, when they were raped, when they um, succumbed to forced pregnancies. These were the little girls on River Road who were captured. Um, in the uh, in the in the unfortunate barbaric uh, breeding system on River Road, uh, sixty percent of those little girls died. By the way, uh, their bodies were dumped in an area called Moses Mass, what we now call Moses Macedonia African Cemetery. Uh, it's probably one of the largest mass graves in the United States, and Montgomery County has spent the last seventy years trying to erase all traces of this Holocaust. Uh, this, atroc uh, this atrocity that occurred um, in one of the richest uh, areas of the world, not just the United States, but one of the richest communities in the world. You know, it, it's just so profane on so many levels when I read this story. I mean, the idea that I think they're trying to put some sort of shopping center or something there just feels... I mean, anything would be bad, but that somehow feels worse to me. But I mean, what has been the attitude of local officials about this? Because I mean, you all have have made this a big issue in the D.C. area, and and I'm right. curious. I know Mark Ehrlich is the 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 when he came into office, he was talking like maybe he was going to do something about this. I mean, what's happening in terms of of officials? How are they responding? Yeah, initially, Mark Elrich, we were one of his major supporters four years ago, and he promised that he was going to resolve this issue. He marched with us. In fact, the first activity that he committed as county executive was to stand with us at a demonstration. And then he very quickly lost our phone number for four years, hmm. uh, has done absolutely nothing. Uh, but thank God for an election year, right? And so because this is an election period, he has sort of reappeared now. And, uh, and recently he came out and said that he now supports uh, transferring the sacred land back to the black community for proper memorialization. Um, however, words are cheap. And, um, and that's where it stops right there. It's just the words. He hasn't called for any of the officials who were engaged in the uh, desecration of these ancient African uh, burial grounds to be uh, prosecuted, no criminal investigation. He hasn't called for the state's attorney to look into these matters um, uh, with the, with you know, with the hope that we would see criminal prosecution. He hasn't even asked the heads of the agencies that still own portions of the cemetery. Uh, he hasn't really um, made it an issue about the fact that they will not even speak to the black community. We have agency heads that have gone on record now saying that they will not talk to black people. They're talking to the climate people, they're talking to transportation people, they're talking to all the sort of white liberal um, uh, organizations in the same area, but they have actually put it in writing that they will not talk to black people. And their jobs have not been questioned. No one has said, if you don't, if you're not willing to talk to Montgomery County taxpayers who are black, you do not have the right to a government job. No one has even put that on the table yet. So our position is that talk is cheap. And that what we're dealing with is organized crime. And it's the same organized crime that gave birth to the slave trade. You know, this collusion between government and private businesses that come together to make more money. And that's what's happening here in Bethesda, Maryland. And we're calling them out. I mean, this feels... You know, I think it would be important no matter what, but it feels so 
just in the context of what's happening in D.C., where the the black community in the entire D.C. region has been, you know, so pushed out, so you know, gentrified yeah. out, assaulted. I mean, this this sort of affront to the historical memory of a traditional burial burial ground like this. It just feels like part of a a bigger effort in the area to just sanitize the region of of the history of of black culture. Yeah, if you do, you know, land use policy is the way that communities are disenfranchised. Um, you know, I'm a member of the WPFW board of directors and called the LSB. And, you know, 70 years ago, Paul Robeson uh, wrote a, a piece called We Charge Genocide, right? And he looked at land use policy. He looked at police brutality. He looked at all the different sectors that one would look at in terms of how do you genocide a community. And the same kind of structure has, was not challenged 70 years ago. It was challenged, of course, but remember the United States government wouldn't even allow this issue to be heard before the United Nations. So, so we're dealing with the same kind of structural white supremacy today. Uh, black people, uh, their memory being erased, um, their land being stolen um, uh, from, from the community, intergenerational wealth being taken away from the community, their children being incarcerated, uh, a younger age for longer periods of time, it's the same structural problem. And so this is the foundation, quite frankly. I mean, we're foundation builders. Mm -hmm. This is the foundation of white supremacy that we're dealing with right now. And that is the total erasure of a people, the total erasure of their memory and their contribution and their ability to fight back because of a lack of memory. I mean, to a large extent, you know, political struggles and, and strategies and tactics are built upon memory and what, what succeeded the last time and what didn't succeed and what failed. So that when you erase a people's memory, you're also erasing their ability to fight back. And that's one of the things, that's one of the challenges that we've taken on in this particular struggle. And so moving forward, what needs to happen and for those who are watching, what can be done for those who want to help? Well, first of all, we ask everyone to call and write to Mark Elrich. Uh, we ask and to, to demand that all the agency heads that refuse to talk to the Black community should be immediately fired, that their budgets should be zeroed out at this point until they are committed to talking to Black people. We can't have a situation in a government where people thump their chests and say, I won't talk to Black people. I will not you know, participate in the discussion. I mean, that takes us back, of course, into the late 1800s. And that's where we're at now in Montgomery County. Um, so we ask people to contact the Housing Opportunities Commission that owns a portion of the cemetery. And of course, the planning board, uh, which oversees land use policy. Land is the basis of all wealth. And when you destroy a people's ability to own land, you're also destroying their power base. And that is what the, uh, the, the uh, Parks and Planning Commission has done so well in Montgomery County, as well as in Washington, D.C. and throughout the entire country. And for those who are watching, Marsha, where can they find out more about the Bethesda African Cemetery Coalition? Certainly, they can go to our website at uh, Bethesda African Cemetery Coalition dot net. Um, they can um, they can you know con email us at No Fear Coalition, No Fear N O F E A R. And believe me, you must have no fear uh, to get involved in this movement. So, <laughs> No Fear Coalition at AOL dot com. Excellent. Well, thank you. Well, they should have no fear getting involved because you have had no fear standing up against all sorts of powerful forces in your career. So really appreciate you coming on and giving us some insight into what's going on there in Bethesda. Thank you so much for having me. Mm -hmm. Pleasure was all ours.